All right, come join Kyle, John and David as they go through what's on the playlist. Find out what's everyone's favourite at Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. We have a few segments, to be honest. In and out points, no celebs and the gossip. Back in time, where we talk about the big M's coming attractions, what the queue, quick checks, who'll be laughing, you abundantly. Welcome to Jewel Redundancy. Yes, welcome to Jewel Redundancy, the only podcast where you can hear all latest in television, entertainment news with too many else. With exactly the same opinions, I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... John Berwick, and the third one is... Kyle Bridger. I would say that I am the beef to this podcast. John is the bear, because we just say yes, chef. And Dave is succession. I will give it to you. The only three shows that must have aired on television, because that is all the TV (laughs) Academy (laughs) awarded this year. I really thought you were going to, like... Surprise me. It's like, and Dave's the better call Saul. Zero yeah, for 53. No, I was nice. I've been nice to you recently. Yeah, I, I like it. The new year, new new you. Yeah. Um, yeah, wow. We're going to break down the Emmys. We got a lot to talk about with that. We have a new show that will probably be up for some Emmys next year or in 2026 when, you know, <laughs> the, the Emmys yeah. the, catch up to themselves. Yeah. We got The Curse. We got uh, Kyle's corner rant. We got a lot going on tonight. <laughs> We're going to jump right in with the Emmys first, though. No in and out points tonight. All right. 75th primetime Emmys on January 15th on Fox after a delay from September. They finally happened this past Monday to honor all the shows from June of 2022 through May of 2023. And going in, Succession led with 27 overall nominations followed by The Last of Us with 23 and The White Lotus uh, also or with 22. If you look at just the primetime major nominations, the ones that you would have you know saw on Monday was Succession with 14, The White Lotus with 12, and Beef with 9. But let's talk about the wins here. John has them up. The three shows that dominated the primetime major wins, it's The Bear and Succession with 6, and then Beef with 5 wins. If you include those creative arts ceremony, you know, the, the previous week where they give out the more technical awards, it was the bear with 10 wins beef and the last of us with eight and succession with six. So really, it's really like all the same shows if, in the, in the primetime broadcast. It was last week tonight with John Oliver is the only other show in addition to the ones I mentioned here, bear succession beef to win multiple primetime awards. Mm. Or, you know, there might've been one, you know, here and there, but it was pretty much, these three or four shows that dominated mm. that night. And mm-hmm. I mean, we said it on the podcast with our predictions. It was going to be Succession versus White Lotus. The yep. Bear, Ted Lasso. I think you also had Evan Elementary in the mix. Mm-hmm. Beef or Dahmer. But we were pretty certain at the end of the day, it was going to be Succession, Bear, yep. and Beef. Yeah. And that's what it was. Yep. Is, is that all we got to talk about today? We're I, good? I, I, I mean, yeah, not, no real surprises here uh, at all. I don't, I don't think we're surprised at, at one bit with any of the wins. Um, yeah, it may, it makes for like an uneventful uh, show, yeah. but because you, because you'd like to see a little win here and there, like an outlier you come in. You yeah. want to have a little, you know, spontaneity. It's just, but I, I, but I also think it's like with the the awards being delayed, it's like I think that factors into it too because it's like, well, we're hearing about you know these shows more and yeah. more as it's going along. Who did you vote for? That kind of thing. Who's whose star is rising? Mm-hmm. All that is happening much much more as the time passes. And we'll definitely talk about it later on. But like Emmys were at a bit of a disadvantage to be where they were in the lineup of of this calendar season. Obviously, they were going to be September. They would have been like the first ones to mm-hmm. anoint the bear and to celebrate mm-hmm. the final season of succession. But instead, you know, they were a week after the Golden Globes and the mm-hmm. day after the Critics' Choice where all of this pretty much matched. And that's what's like, we don't have too much to say because these picks were so chalk. Like they were so set in stone. Mm-hmm. You know, they match what we saw already Mm -hmm. in the past week at two other awards shows even though technically the bear won all these awards for season one even Mm -hmm. though a week ago it won all these awards at the golden globes for season two 
You know what? And I have a bone to pick about this, especially with the bear, because I thought it was most egregious with it when I was tuning into the Emmys. Okay, we're we're already having a hard time doing the math of when these shows aired, what season is up for what award. But then every single time, especially I noticed it with Evan Moss Backrack, yeah. they were using his photo from season two <laughs> for the awards of him yeah. in the suit at the in the in the yeah. so i was like this is making it even more confusing like this is for yeah. season 1 and yet you're using the photo for season 2 because clearly that's what's on everyone's mind it's it's it was and, just and like, that's it, what helped i think with his win because you know yeah we, let's talk about the just the comedy races here i mean we all knew it was going to be between probably Ted Lasso and the Bear and you would know probably within the first one or two awards where it was mm, going and after yeah. like the first one i think uh uh uh, Io here won it for supporting actress. It's like, all right, it's going to be probably the bear night. And yeah. then you know, Evan wins. It's like, all right. And it ends up picking up comedy series lead actor, both su supporting categories and writing and directing for a comedy series. It just missed out on lead actress, but there was nobody in that category. But AO next year or this September, I guess, will be moving to lead mm. for season two. Okay. Um, and I really think because of the whole when it was airing season two versus when season one was being voted on, it certainly helped the bears wins here. Cause I think sure. as much as I love Evan Moss Bacharach in this role, I think season one, he was good. Yeah. I don't think he was the standout, as you said in, you know, mm -hmm. the forks episode, his standout yeah. episode of season two, but that's what they were seeing when they were voting yeah. for this. And so <laughs> of course it's of course. very confusing. And I think next year, or next or September. I don't know if we're going to have season three by then, mm -hmm. but even if we don't, it'll be up for season two at the awards. And we're going to see probably so many more nominations because you have all those guest categories, you know, for all the people that were in the Forks episode mm -hmm. at that dinner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if season three rolls around, you know, by next year, you'll have so many other <laughs> Hollywood people that will want to be in this show. Like, I feel like at this point, it's like, you know, Meryl Streep, uh, Robert De Niro, all those like big names are going to be like, I'll sign up for this. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, very confusing with all, with all the awards and who's getting what, but I think any thoughts about, you know, the comedy races, Kyle, cause yeah, it's, uh, it was all the bear Ted Lasso completely shut out for its final season. Yeah. I I mean, and I kind of agree with that. I didn't think it was Ted. La I think Ted Lasso's strongest season was the first season Yeah, and it's just gone down, uh, since then. Um, so I agree with it being shut out. If I, if for me, the contender was a Abbott elementary, they did win in one of the categories yep. with Quinta Brunson. Yep. So I think, um, I think it went along with what your thinking was, is like, they're, they're going to highlight the creator of that show yeah. for this thing. Um, uh, I just still think it's a weird category because it yeah. is a comedy, I guess, but there it, was a lot of people online like yeah. mad about this. And I, I can see it kind of too. It's, just because it's 30 minutes, is it a comedy? Yeah. yeah. He, and then you look at the rest of the category, it's like, you know, you got Barry in there. Barry was not a comedy. I, yeah. I love it, but it was not yeah. a comedy this final mm -hmm. season. And I would say that, like, I, I mean, you could equal succession with yeah. some of its dark comedy is similar to the yeah. bear in a in a in a sense. And we'll talk uh, about it with the white lotus in a little bit too. That's a, yeah. a satire. Yeah. Like that's yeah. yeah. So, uh, so it's, it's just weird to see it in the comedy category, but I think it's a well-deserved. Yeah. No, it, I, I, I do enjoy the show. It's a great show. And, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So. All right. Let's, let's talk a little bit about drama in, in succession here. Yeah. Succession got drama series. Kieran Culkin, uh, Sarah Schnook won the lead categories. Matthew mm -hmm. McFadden picked up a uh, supporting actor in a drama, uh, and then also claimed drama writing and drama directing for the Connor's wedding episode mm -hmm. of this past season. Um, this means it only missed out on one. And that was the supporting drama actress. Um, Jay Smith Cameron was nominated in that category, but it was Jennifer Coolidge who mm. won here for the white Lotus. She won the previous ceremony for limited series uh, supporting actress, but here white Lotus is now in the drama category um, so this category pretty much had J. Smith Cameron, as I mentioned. Um, we'll talk about her in a second, Ray Seahorn, and five 
white lotus star so anyone hoping for you know or thinking that there was going to be any kind of white lotus split didn't happen it was jennifer coolidge uh Mm. what are your thoughts here kyle on on the drama race you know obviously with succession winning with we, we could talk about jennifer coolidge the white lotus other snubs what do you think um i mean these are the people we had uh so i don't think there's any surprises there i think sarah snook and madison mcfaden are well well deserved yeah uh, i think kieran culkin we were unsure maybe they go with another way but i think it's deserved there as well um the Jennifer Coolidge thing is so interesting because I feel like she has come out of nowhere and she's beloved in Hollywood by everyone. And I think that suits her well for, for winning these types of things. But, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Like I remember she was like back in like American pie days. So it's, yeah. it's just like, she's come a long, long way. I, I believe. I so, just love that character in yeah. White Lotus and, Again, I mean, maybe it was just like, oh, it's because, you know, spoiler for season two, this was her send off. And this yeah. is, you know, like we got to award her for the final one. It's like, well, you already awarded her for the previous one. Yeah. And again, she was she was fun in The White Lotus. But mm -hmm. I think if you're actually going to look at like the drama acting from The White Lotus, that the finale with Megan Fahey, I mean, yeah. uh, it just just what she does and just the look. Yeah, like was what Jennifer Coolidge yeah. did in the season. I feel yeah. like, and it was such a comedic performance. I think I saw John that you were had some comments <laughs> uh, about that as well, and you took to to I Twitter. Made a, I made a little bit of a, a trolley post about how uh, Coolidge won. Uh, well, she she won supporting for her lead role in a second season of a limited series. Yeah. It's like it's like uh, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. All that over. Uh, Ray Seahorn, who uh, is zero for however many now. It's just like, really? Really? Yeah. And and I I'm sure she's a, a wonderful person. I can't stand that character. So it's just yeah. like salt yeah, yeah. in the wound. You know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. yeah. I kind of agree with John. I don't really love the character either. Mm. Um, and, uh, But I will, what I will say in defense of Jennifer Coolidge is like Aunt, uh, White Lotus in general is they – I don't think it's necessarily their fault with where they're categorized yeah. and how it ended up, but I think it does a disservice to somebody like Ray Seahorn, uh, who mm -hmm. uh, I think deserve, I mean, better call Saul in general deserves, um, yeah. you know, more than what it got more than Oh, for 53 yeah. or whatever it yeah. was. We'll talk yeah. about that in a second, but yeah, yeah. The, the, it, it's tough with like with, with Jennifer Coolidge. It's just, and and just yeah, the white lotus in general. And we we talked about it a little bit here. It's like it's being forced in in the in the drama category here, even though it's like a satire and it's really funny, probably funnier than the bear at points. And I don't know. I just I I I, I it's tough. I I don't I don't think it belongs here. Just in general, with they made all these rules with like the whole limited versus drama thing, like a reoccurring character. But then you know Fargo is able to be in, in the limited category still. And I remember season two, sure, it was played by a different actor, but, you know, there was the, the and it was a prequel, but it was the same character mm -hmm. leading the case in season two that was appearing in season one. And yeah, so like those cases were sort of connected and it's like ticky tack. I feel like we're really like, you know, splitting yeah. hairs here, but yeah. Oh, well, as you said, I mean, Matthew McFadden, Sarah Snook, Kieran Culkin all deserved it. You know, obviously would have loved, you know, Jeremy to get another Emmy, but there's just, it's too hard to, to yeah. there's not enough categories for yeah. Succession to win. Yeah. But because Succession was winning them all, that means no love at all for Saul. And this one hurts. And we've been talking about it for the last two or three years. How is it going to be possible? Are they really not ever going to get an Emmy? And yeah, they're never going to get an Emmy. Zero for 53. Mm. WTF. <laughs> like, uh, we need well, another season. <laughs> yeah. all, all the more reason, though. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sad. I mean, uh, I've said it before that this is maybe my peak TV, and, and it's good that it's getting recognized with nominations, but that's not really... That's not really... Not, not that it's not enough, but, like, uh, it's definitely better than some of the stuff that's won in the past, you know? Definitely. I was like looking up like stuff and, you know, just seeing it. it's like there's somewhere it's like, OK, yeah, of course, that makes sense. But it's like 
you know, you also just think about it in general. It's like never for writing, never for directing, mm -hmm. cinematography, just Bob Odenkirk in general. Just yeah. give Bob an Emmy. But like, and then I was like thinking about it. It's like there was also times where it wasn't even nominated when it should have been. Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, yeah. for Chuck, uh, Michael McKean uh, not being nominated for the episode Chicanery and that monologue. Mm -hmm. uh, no love ever for Tony Dalton as Lalo or even, you know, TV legend Carol Burnett. You know, mm -hmm. not getting anything uh, a nomination. It's just there's so many times where they could have nominated this show. So many times that the show should have won. And for what happened with like the bear with like the timing, and it's like, all right, we're airing uh, season two when they're voting on season one. They kind of tried this a little bit by splitting that half season up or for that final season where they're like, all right, well, we're doing the first part. And while voting is going on, they're going to see the final episodes and maybe that'll help. And that would have helped mm -hmm. last year. But if anything, it might have screwed them this, this year. year because it was yeah. so long, long ago. since those final yeah. episodes for them to remember this time around. But yeah, yeah I mean, this uh, this show should be uh, like I saw on another uh, I saw online. This thing should be encased in gold. That's yeah. how good this show is. Yeah. But um you know, you just get in these weird years. I mean, Succession is a, a behemoth. Yeah. How it, It's unlucky there. Um, and I've said this before. I think it gets taken for granted of how good it is. It's a different vibe than Breaking Bad. And I don't know if it was as popular as Breaking mm -hmm. Bad. So yeah. uh, all those things. Um, uh, I, I mean, Ray Seahorn, Bob Odenkirk aren't really big names. I mean, they've been in... Yeah. In Hollywood, like Bob has been around, but they're not huge names. Um, so yeah. I think they're all not that Jason Bateman and Ozark, or, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, Game of Thrones, you know, yeah. It's, so I think it was always going to be very, very tough because they just got in some weird years where there was a really popular show, say it's Ozark, you know, the first couple of seasons there, people were dying yeah. for it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, just tough. I think bad timing and the lack of popularity with the show. Mm -hmm. But hopefully in the long run it will be seen as a a um like a yeah, industry I mean, it leading the, show. The yeah. ranks of like something like The yeah. Wire and you know a bunch yeah. of other I think Parks and Rec never got an uh an Emmy as well. There's a bunch there on that list. It's like, oh yeah, they never won an Emmy. Yeah. Um but all right. One last little thing we can talk about real quick is is the limited uh, limited series anthology series. Uh, Beef pretty much won what you know Succession did. Limited series lead actor, uh, lead actress, uh, writing, directing. Uh, it just cleaned up. The only things it missed out on were supporting. Uh, Nisi Nash Betts won for Dahmer, mm -hmm. Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, and then uh, Paul Walter Hauser for Blackbird, um, mm -hmm. which again we we predicted those as well, but. Yeah, I don't have much more to say. It's like, yeah, Beef was the show of the year. Yeah. For limited yeah, series. So it won. It's um, very, uh, the only thing we say, a very weak category this year, yeah. I think, compared I think to overall, others. Yeah. yeah. Especially when we look at like Obi-Wan Kenobi's in this category, yeah. which aired literally at yeah. the start of the Emmy eligibility yeah. period of like May of 2022. It was like, yeah. but all right. So yeah, it was these three shows dominated and as much as like they deserved it like is that good i feel like for television for the the emmys because it's like yeah there's like 600 shows and we're just really awarding these three it's like the emmy voters only watch these three like i feel like the emmys are already in a diff difficult spot being you know delayed because of the strikes and like it just seemed like oh we're just gonna reward the same three that you know they wanted the golden globes and the next day you know, or the day before with the critics choice. And it's just like, even like, I feel like the, the actors are like, I'm running out of things to say. I don't have any more people to thank. Like, it's all the, I just did this yesterday. It's Groundhog's Day. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. And I don't know. It's, is this good, Kyle? It's just every year. I feel like it used to be, I think a little bit more spread out. Everyone would, yeah, you know, yeah. two wins here, two wins there. But now it's like, you're in a show, your show's winning and everything else, like it doesn't stand a chance. Yeah, uh, I wonder, a uh, couple of thoughts. I wonder if it's to do with the sheer bulk of shows that are out there. Okay. So it's like, 
I only watch these three, you know, and I'm just going to give them everything because I know it was good. Uh, I also am starting to wonder how much is, you know, things like Twitter or mm. social media in general, how much is it affecting voting? Um, because if you're bombarded with information, whereas before, maybe I just see a screener. I really enjoyed mm. this person's acting and I'm going to go with them rather than, wow, I'm constantly hearing about so-and-so, so-and-so, and and therefore I'm going to vote for them. I mean, they always had that stuff. They always, uh, you know, are, uh, it's a political event. They're always vying for, you know, putting ads in the, the, the papers and whatnot for these, uh, the trades for these people. But, um, I just wonder how much social media impacts these things, but I will say something like beef. I, I mean, I binged it. I I yeah. was like, I gotta watch this throughout, and so um, it's just interesting. It could be the way that the shows come out now, so show social media, um, stuff like that. That would be my thoughts on that. Yeah, I just it, it does like worry me like a little bit, like just like for the future of like these awards shows, like to go all in on something because it's like. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like people at home are like, I'm not gonna bother with this. Like, yeah, even like, yeah. like I saw like some like footage of like Bob Oonkirk on the red carpet, and it's just like everyone's, you know, the interviewer's like, Oh, Bob, you're so excited to be here, and he's like, No, like <laughs> he's like, I mean, he's pretty much like to be honest, like because he could, you could see he was resigned. He's like, I'm not winning. Like, yeah, it's nice to be here, but like, yeah, okay, and. Yeah. I think, I, think Rob, seeing... I, oh. I think Rob McElhenney was yeah. watching the Philadelphia Eagles game yeah. on his, his cell phone when he was sitting yeah. down. <laughs> Definitely. I saw that as well. And yeah. and I think that's where people were watching that night instead of the yeah. Emmys. Uh, we see it in the ratings. Award show fatigue, competition, whatever it was. Record low ratings, 4.3 million viewers. That's it. Keenan's uh, ceremony last year um, was 5.9 million. That was a low then. But this is down about 4 million viewers i think i saw in the ratings an encore repeat episode of ncis on cbs uh was ahead of it in the ratings so that's just showing where mm, the tv okay. audience is, is what they're watching <laughs> what they're doing yeah and it just wasn't the you know people at home that weren't watching i think people in the audience weren't there either uh my household online we all noticed how empty the theater was was getting like yeah like first it was like in the far back, you know, like that back section. Oh yeah, those are just you know, off-camera empty seats. But then like as the ceremony went on, it was just like there was just like rows and rows that were just straight up empty. And it's like, did they yeah. not even have enough seat fillers? Like Kyle, they had us at the Creative <laughs> Arts Emmys. Like the Creative <laughs> Arts barely televised Emmys. Yeah, they had us, and they couldn't find us for this. Like, uh, they didn't fly us out, man. They didn't ask us. <laughs> you know? We've been there. Um, but I mean, if you're, if you're there and you see that the, the same show is winning, yeah. I would, Hey, I'm going to hit the bar, Yeah, <laughs> you know, or go to the after party. Yeah. It's like, Oh, okay. My comedy categories are done, but oh, I have to stay around for comedy series and it's going to be the bear, but let me just go the next two hours at the bar yeah. and just, yeah, like hang out. But yeah, I mean, as for the ceremony, like, I don't have much to say. It was, it was fine. Like it ended on time. There was just so many awards. There's like 27 awards they have to rush through. And Anthony Anderson, you know, makes a point, you know, at the beginning, say, keep the speeches short. We got it. We got a lot to do tonight. A lot of, you know, keep it moving. And it's like, and I think to myself, like, why? Like, isn't that what we're here for? The speeches, the spontaneity, the emotion, the odd Mm -hmm. throwaway jokes in the speech. It's like, if we're just going to do the awards, just like the winners listed, just do a press conference and like call it a day. Yeah. And I don't know. He he had his mom there to kind of be like playoff music instead of like having an orchestra. It's just mm-hmm. his mom yelling like "get off the stage" kind of thing. And mm-hmm. I feel like they like course corrected a bit throughout the ceremony because they did it first with Jennifer Coolidge and they were telling her to wrap it up. And it was it was a little awkward, you know, it was a little yeah. funny, but it was also like, you know, is it a really a good look for like this woman to just like, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's awkward for her like yeah. to have to do this and yeah. God forbid if, you know, one of the the winners starts, you know, saying some emotional, heartfelt, mm-hmm. deep story. It's like, <laughs> hey, wrap it up. We don't you, need to hear this. You Play said my that. violin enough. Like, there was a, a big game award ceremony a couple, couple months ago and they were 
the guy was dedicating like something to uh, someone really high up in the dev team who had yeah. passed away like right before the event. And it, no, they didn't show it on the stream, but there's pictures of like the big screen like this that says "wrap it up," and it's just uh, like that's really uh, what you want to do when someone's yeah. like talking about their their like partner yeah. who's who's built this company, released this AAA like game that won the night of awards, and you're just like telling the dude to wrap it up. It's like, eh, mm. come on, you know? Yeah. I would just hate to be in her position yeah. of like having to t- yell at these people to wrap it up and oh my gosh it's a lot of pressure for her and yeah but yeah the overall the night kind of celebrated the history of tv and there's some things i actually liked about it. it was it was a good mix of the shows that they picked i was worried at first though because like for the show to open and it was like three theme songs from you know past tv shows which was also like what i think keenan did exactly the, the ceremony before mm. it so it was like the same exact thing but anyways for those three to be good times the facts of life in Miami Vice, I'm like, so we just like are giving up on the younger demo for this. We do not yeah. care at all. <laughs> yeah. This. And and later on, they they mixed in some more like contemporary shows. I was happy to see like how they did the presenting combos. They kind of did it as like, you know, uh, like re- reunions. They had you know they came out to their theme songs. Ken Jong and uh, Joel McHale came out to the community theme song. They had the full Always Sunny cast there. Uh, you know, doing a, a bit, you know, talking about how they've never, uh, been, yeah, you know, up for any awards. Do you guys um, do this every year? Yeah. <laughs> and I do love how like the irony. So they had, they did a bunch of like cast reunions on sets as well, like makeshift sets. And uh, Sunny came out in two thousand five. Another show, Grey's Anatomy, came out in two thousand five. They both were like recognized like for these reunions. It's like. Well, both of these shows are still on, first of all. Yeah. And then second, um, great. They, they even commented on it. It's like, they're getting a full set. Like, where's the set of Patty's <laughs> Pub? Like, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's like, but they they got, you know, they got legends in each field. Like Carol Burnett for comedy, Arsenio Hall for talk shows. It's like, okay, I like what we're doing here. And, and, and they had a good mix of like these reunions. Alec McBeal, Cheers, Martin. They had, you know, a bunch of different. Reunions. I will say, I'll, I'll nitpick a little bit. I look. I'm, I'm in. I'm watching The Sopranos right now. I'm not sure if that one really counts as a reunion when you have two people from the show. Is yeah. That really a reunion. Yeah. And also, like, there's so many. Like, you couldn't get the kid that played AJ. Yeah. Jimmy Lynn Sigler. Like, you couldn't get yeah. like anyone from the show. Like, also, I, I don't know. know. But I know. I, I like seeing Michael Imperioli there, but you know. Yeah, I just wonder with the with the reunions and stuff. Like, what was the who decided that? Yeah, who decided what what we're uh, you know looking back on? Because it's interesting. Because okay, Sopranos. This is this month is the twenty fifth anniversary. Mm-hmm. The, that makes sense. All right, that that's something here. But yeah, it's like Grey's Anatomy. It's like two thousand five. It's like oh maybe wait till next year. Maybe I don't know. Or like uh. Same with like I don't know like the the timeline of Alec Beal and Martin and Cheers, but it's just like mm. why now for those yeah. shows? And I feel yeah. like that's a, a reoccurring theme with a lot of it. But um, the only surprise for me of of the surprise of the night for me was the John Oliver versus SNL of it all, because for years they would actually win their respective categories. Mm. Um, they were they were separate, but for the first time, John Oliver was against SNL in the Outstanding Scripted Variety Series category Mm -hmm. while his old competitors were all in the outstanding talk series category uh this Mm -hmm. year so they kind of split it and so it was like oh who's gonna win snl versus john oliver we'll finally get a you know a decision here out of the two i would have picked john oliver and that's what it was Mm -hmm. um but it's funny because like i saw on like uh kimmel's talk show here that he was always saying for years they would complain that you know john oliver was always winning but it's like they could at least say oh you're probably like second but like mm-hmm. now he's gone. Uh, the Daily Show's Trevor Noah won in that category, which again ended back in like December of 2022. So that's like, oh, no, we weren't even second. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now we're, like, you know, we kick him out and he's still gone. But I still don't understand then how like SNL, John Oliver, Daily Show, all those talk shows are then in the outstanding writing for a variety series category still. So they're still yeah, all competing yeah. there, but they're not competing there. It's, but whatever. Um, that's all I have to say about the Emmys. But, uh, uh, but, but do you have anything? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Just with the John Oliver thing, how? Because I, I don't watch it that frequently. 
how often are they doing like scripted bits like SNL is there? I mean, they have like their, they have like maybe it, a, it's a, not a like five that. minute thing at the end. Sometimes yeah. where they'll bring in like a little, like a, a skit, you know, with a famous actor, yeah. you know, to do whatever they were commenting on, but it is like a death, death peaks, which is like, they, you know, Jimmy Fallon does not do what John Oliver does. He doesn't have mm. like, John, Oliver, you know, it's like the, the whole thing with talk show guests versus, but he is doing a monologue, so it is very yeah. confusing. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, but oh, oh well, that's it. That's it for the Emmys. Mm-hmm. We got normally I would say we talk about them next year, but we're probably going to be talking about them this July <laughs> <the> next <laughs> set of nominations. So get ready for that. Maybe, maybe our next show will be up for some Emmys. In order to talk about it, we have to go back. So send us back. back I'm we're back, back baby. Ready. Gotta get back in time. Yes, all right. We're talking about True Detective Night Country. Now, this is the premiere episode, part one. Technically, it's it's season four of True Detective, but it these are standalone seasons, so it's season one, episode one of Night Country. I <laughs> uh, dropped on January 14th. This season takes place in Ennis, Alaska, and follows detectives. Danvers, played by Jodie Foster, and Navarro, played by Callie Reese, as they investigate the disappearance of eight men who operate an Arctic research station and vanish without a trace. All right, before we dive into this specific episode, John, tell me your familiar, you know, familiarity with the franchise. Were you excited for this new season? What were your thoughts going into Night Country? Yeah, I watched, I think, season two. Because we covered that. I didn't watch season one, although I hear it's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Season one I, is the good one of yeah. the yeah. two seasons. Yeah. I, I think I think I might own it somewhere, like on streaming or a disc or something. I just I never ended up watching it yet. Um oh I I guess I have it on HBO as well, but um and then I think we watched season two as well. Um on the pod uh, sorry, season three as well on the podcast. Uh, it I was think about we did or the premiere. We did the premiere. I remember like kids on bikes and something like that, I think was that. And but I, I'd things. have to no, no, not, not that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've seen, I've seen some of it. Um, I, I thought the episode was okay. Um, I think part of this kind of like detective show is how much of your hand do you play at the beginning? Yeah. In your in your pilot episode, because it's it's a fine balance to play enough of it where the audience is like, oh, I want to know more. But they're not, oh, you spoiled it. You know what I mean? And uh, this one, I, I think, has some, not supernatural, but maybe more like mythical trends to it. And I think as much as it was interesting, I don't know if it really grabbed me and made me go like, oh, what happened to those guys? Why, what happened? You know, like, it's more of, all right, something happened. What, what is it? You know, so uh, I think, think this will be one that I'll probably watch, but... I think that in the past, uh, other detective shows have really made me um, uh, yearn for some more rather than just be like, yeah, I'd watch more, you know? Mm. Yeah, so for me, I definitely watched season one. It's been a while, so I don't remember the details with it. Season two, I watched it, but I remember not being good. And I think I watched the premiere of season three. Seems good, but I just I didn't keep up with it. I think I was maybe so burnt, you know, from season two. And all those were done by Nick Pizzolatto. Uh, he did those three seasons. This season, Issa Lopez created this season. She's the showrunner here. I'm not familiar with her past work. But what can I tell so far? It does, to me, feel like the true detective. Because from what I remember of season one, there is sort of like some, I don't, yeah, the mythical, like supernatural sort of possibilities in there with like, was it the Yellow King season one? But like, it didn't turn out to be like so there's like traces of like that kind of stuff but you know it's not going to be fargo season three with aliens like it's not going to just be yeah something like that um so yeah so far i i feel like it, you know it has the, it's definitely dark crimes that true detective deals with this has some you know moments of levity which i'm sure we got with woody versus matthew mcconaughey in the first season so mm-hmm. there's like the the elements i feel like are there for what makes up True Detective, the the two kind of, you know, cops that and don't really get along, you know, kind of trying to solve mm. a case together. Like, all the pieces are there. 
So I am interested. I was intrigued by this pilot because they're they're setting up a lot of stuff, as you said. But Kyle, what did you think of the premiere? Um, so I'm just gonna history with True Detective. I recently, yes. I, I I watched all season one. I rewatched it recently. It's, okay. it's great. I recommend going back and watching it. Uh, I will say it does trail off at the end. We kind of speed yeah. through some stuff, but season two, I think I watched everything but the finale in season three I watched, which was definitely better than two. Um, but the premiere, uh, I agree with a lot of what you guys are saying. And I find the the concept interesting, but the episode wasn't necessarily entertaining. Like, mm. the, like I was like, this is interesting to me, but I, I don't know if I... Like, it feels like a little bit like homework. Like, I'm not really totally sold on it yet. Um, because to me, I it's like, it, it, how it's different supernatural-wise in season one. Season one felt rooted in some kind of, yeah. like, religion or something that yeah. we already have. Whereas this feels like almost otherworldly and outside. So it, does, it doesn't seem, like, grounded in anything and t- unless we see... That it's some kind of indigenous something or yeah. something that it, it could so, be, that yeah. hasn't been brought up yet. Yeah. Um, I do agree. Great moments of levity. Um, I am interested. I think they do a really good job of building this world and what it would be like to live in the dark yeah. and and the the effect it has on the town. So I think it does a really really good job with that. And I think that's what I find interesting. Uh, I'm just wondering how the supernatural stuff ties in with that stuff. And I know it's still early yet. We're still figuring out. We're still uh, going along for the ride. But uh, I, 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 it kind of took me out of it at points. Um, but seeing some of these characters, I'm interested. I'm interested to see what happens with them. Um, and it's it's a cool setting. It's a It's a cool setting, I think. Yeah, I think that the setting, as you mentioned, like with, with, the, with just like the darkness, you're so far up north by the Arctic Circle, mm-hmm. that, like the towns be facing weeks of darkness. It probably was a pain to shoot, you know, so many mm. night shoots for these guys. Like, yeah. you know, they're probably nocturnal by the end of this. Yeah. It, but it just adds so much, you know, with the, with the snow flurries. It's very moody. Uh, it just adds so much to the tone of the show. And I thought like, you know, like the first 10 minutes of the show, I thought like really locked me in. Mm -hmm. um maybe like towards the end yeah like when they were actually getting to like the case and yeah like there was a lot of like stuff you had to pay attention to but when you're starting off like when you know that that hunter you know witnessing all these like Mm -hmm. caribou or you know deer uh acting very uh, weirdly jumping off the cliff to like their deaths like what's what are they running from Mm -hmm. and we had that man at the research facility like i was like i was liking this oh this is kind of cool little like dharma initiative like what are we doing and then you know for him to have some sort of seizure and it's like she is awake and it's like again what does that mean and yeah uh we have this character of travis uh, who appears to uh fiona shaw's character um leads her in like to the ice where there's the missing researchers are found you know frozen Mm -hmm. in into you know in like with a look of horror and and nobody says like who brought you here it's like travis is like travis is dead and she's like yeah i i know it's just like it's like yeah what does this mean she's seeing stuff i mean because I don't remember exactly season three, but Mahershala Ali's character had, was it like uh, Alzheimer's or like he was like seeing visions or like yeah, misremembering yeah, stuff? There, like, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, he was older. He was older yeah. and looking back at it. And yeah, he, he was so kind of the unreliable like narrator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so there's there's a lot of stuff they're setting up here. I like the like kind of small town of it all. Like all of these people mm. have connections to each other that mm. we don't know, but like you know they're not spending time giving us all the exposition at once. They're mm. trusting us to be smart enough to gain pieces along the way. Like we're our own detectives. Yeah. You know, because you know, it's like yeah, Danvers has uh, a step kid, or at least is watching over a teenage daughter that after like her dad died mm-hmm. i'm guessing maybe possibly from a drunk driving incident that's why maybe yeah. she's so angry with that repeat offender uh she yeah. nearly gets into an accident with but yeah you have you know co-worker with the a young cop uh peter whose father also works at the station and there's like that something going on there because it's yeah like he has to steal back all the police documents from his house you know mm-hmm. uh, so it's like the, there's there's a lot of stuff 
here. We have uh, we we have uh, uh, an old case that never yeah. got solved that somehow mixing in with this and yeah. it's kind of consumed both of the the police officers so yeah so so yeah all the pieces are there it's you know the fi family dynamics the opposing detectives um so i'm interested to see where this goes in but as you guys say it's you know sometimes like when you're dealing with the mystical uh supernatural things it's it's a fine line you know mm -hmm. and, and also as john said you can't give the audience too much, you know, yeah. to solve the case, but you also have can't leave us in the dark. So people might figure it out beforehand or maybe, you know, you don't want to get to the end and be like, that makes no sense. Or, you know, or mm. I knew it all along. So it's a very fine yeah. line when doing a mystery show like this. Yeah. All right. Are you guys going to be watching any more, you think, uh, Kyle? I think I'll probably check back in after a few more came out and, and give it another shot. I, I don't know if I'm going to be... Um carving out some time in my schedule to watch every week, but yeah, if there's an opportunity to maybe uh, hit one or two and see if it uh, develops a bit more. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely going to check out the next one. Uh, I, like John, I don't think this is must see. I don't think I have to go in Sunday and watch it immediately, but I'll definitely tune in uh, and see what's going on and then go from there. Uh, like I said, I'm interested in the concept and the idea. I, I wondering how the execution is going to go. Do they do they have the juice to finish yeah. off this uh, yeah. this tightrope that they're walking? And it should be. I mean, I'm guessing six, seven episodes. It should have a beginning, middle, end. It's not going to be dragged out for eight seasons. So <laughs> we should have answers. Uh, so we'll see. You know, check in in a month or two to see how it all ends. But. We do have a finale to talk about, and it's actually my quick check. It might be a little bit long, but I have to talk about this. Uh, John, play the clip. Quick check. Yes. All right. So I'm going to talk about The Curse. Season one is at the end. I don't know. But um, The Curse finale, Green Queen. I don't know if you guys ever watch any of this. I know it's on Paramount Plus with Showtime, so it's a little harder to get. But Yeah, I'm going to have to... Do a 30 day trial here soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am about to really rip the band aid off and spoil Go the for ending. It. I, it's one of those things. I don't even know where to begin with this ending. So <laughs> I'm telling you, buckle up. It was, okay, uh, it was yeah. a ride. So I'll, I'll, I got to set it up and then we'll talk about it. So the season, you know, kept you on your toes the entire time. They were ra ratcheting up the tension, the cringe. Sprinkling in some jokes as they satirize reality TV and how fake it all is. And if you were looking for like a neat bow to like wrap up the season, I don't think you're getting it. There, but there's a lot to digest and rethink. And I've seen so much stuff that all the clues that may have been pointing to this ending that nobody, nobody saw coming. So the finale, we jump ahead. We see Whitney is pregnant. They're on the Rachel Ray show to promote their show, uh, their HGTV show. We have an actor from The Sopranos there. He's cooking meatballs to sell out his cookbook. It's a normal curse episode, you know, making fun of all the behind the scenes stuff of this fake TV world, you know, that they're all part of. And these houses that's behind them there, as you see, they're 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 on the show, Rachel Ray and this uh, HGTV show talking about their eco friendly homes that, you know, don't have ACs. They're more of like a thermos, which have all these like all the heat and air pressure all like locked inside for like, you know, you know, just keeping it cool when it's cool and hot when it's hot. But they have a baby on the way and they're secretly kind of working to add in the AC into the baby's nursery, because even though they promote these homes are safe, they're, they're not going to live with that and you know, have it affect their lives, you know, for sure, the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the next morning, this word turns. The couple wakes up and Whitney's in bed and Asher, Nathan Fielder's character, is on the ceiling. And somehow this pressure is pushing him towards the ceiling and he can't be pulled down. Of course, with all this activity, Whitney goes into labor. And while the doula tries to help Nathan come out from the doorway, thinking once maybe he's out of the house, he will be fine back you know, to the ground. Somehow gravity is reversed for him and he continues being pulled up and he finds himself now stuck and holding onto a tree branch. If he lets go of this tree branch, it's very likely that he's going to be shot up into the sky <laughs> so now producer dougie here 
of course wants to capitalize on all this get the footage for season two because he didn't see he didn't see any of this the only person that saw this was the doula and emma stone's character so like they ran ran off to the hospital to do the baby so nobody sees this like they don't believe asher that like uh -huh. what are you talking about like just so the fire trucks come in nobody's listening to asher he says he can't jump he needs like a net around his back anchored to the truck Dougie keeps trying to get footage. He has a drone going. The firemen all think it's just a stunt or prank for the show kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, after a while, it seems like, oh, maybe they'll do the net or whatever. But then they realize that, like, they, the the fire, uh, the firemen there, they they start train sawing the tree branch. And he, and Asher starts screaming. And I really actually felt this tension. Like, I was so nerve wracking. Like, I've been iffy on Nathan's acting all season just because like, uh, I know Nathan's. He really sold it here. It was like actually terrifying because we knew as the audience what was going to happen. Yeah. And and, you know, to everyone's surprise, Asher is pulled up into the sky, flying out into the atmosphere, curling up into like a ball, almost like the 2001 Space Odyssey baby, you know, in the air. Uh. And as he leaves, Whitney's baby is born. And as the fire trucks wrap up the scene, onlookers ask like, oh, like what movie is all this for? And. Somebody's like, oh, that was the HGTV guy. And they're like, oh, so all this was for TV. Huh. And <laughs> that's that's the end of the curse. Oh, and, my gosh. That's wild, dude. And it's just there's so much to unpack because is it symbolic? Maybe it's just Fielder and Safety like laughing at everyone trying to find deeper meaning. Yeah. But I mean, there's there's a lot of things that it could be. I mean, it could be obviously like just about the pressure of fatherhood, like literal pressure. Your world's upside down, you're not you know. It's just you're being pulled away because like the bond between the 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 mother and the baby. You know, there's no need for you. Mm. You're, you're, you're maybe you're seeing everything from a different angle now. Mm. There's so much stuff to unpack with that. Personally, I like you know kind of the, go back to the commentary of what they've been talking about with TV. Maybe even Nathan's work in general. Everyone is acting like this is a stunt to promote his show, which he does a lot in real life. And maybe just the over idea of like tricking the audience to sell your art. Like mm. you need to have this mysterious curse of, you know, for the season to get people to watch this show, which is really just about an average couple. And that yeah. was like on us, like for us to get to watch the show, you have to like kind of trick us into watching this. Mm. And even to go back to the beginning of this episode, you have a star from one of the most prestigious shows of all time, The Sopranos, on a daytime talk show cooking meatballs to promote his work. Yeah. And so yeah. there's there's definitely some, you know, parallels with all that. It's 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 a lot to think about. I saw so many like things that people are pointing out now, just little lines or maybe just different camera things that may have been pointing to something like this happening, but watching this and just like thinking it was a normal episode and then just the rug being pulled out and seeing what they did. I don't know how they even did the stunts of what he was doing being because there was points where I'm like, oh, they're probably just spinning it like, you know, like the Inception elevator. No, like that's not it because there was points where like both were off the ground. It was wire work probably was involved. It was very intricate. But overall, it, it is, it's just I wasn't sure what this show was, if it was a mini series, if it was a drama series, comedy, like what was this? If is, it, is it ongoing? And, you know, last mm -hmm. month when Emma Stone was nominated in drama for the Golden Globes, not a comedy. I'm like, oh, I guess they're gonna do multiple seasons of this it's not limited mm -hmm. but at this point i don't know what how, how is this not yeah. a limited series yeah because i was gonna Asher's i was gonna dead. he's up in the sky sir. Like, he's gone like yeah i know i was gonna ask you i was like is this drama limited where how are we doing one season are they gonna get emma stone to do more than one season i mean you know? i mean emma stone is a uh producer on the show uh i think it was it's part of a24 but i think it's also like her production company with her husband and I mean, I don't maybe, know. Maybe Asher's reborn as the I mean, baby. There's and... definitely something possibly with that. You got a little Nathan going around. I don't yeah. know. It's going to be like the what we do in the shadows uh, with <laughs> yeah. little Colin Robinson. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so that's the curse. Uh, I, I had to talk about it. At first I was on the fence, but then I watched the finale. I'm like, yeah, I'm talking about this because it needs to be talked about. It's just it was wild. It was it was it was legitimately terrifying. Like I, this is now a new fear I have. Like it's just how they did it, and just like the physicality of the stunt. It just 
I, I'm still wrapping my head up like how they actually did some of this work, but mm. you have to check it out, man. Yeah. It sounds cool. Sorry, I, I I ruined it. No, uh, I, listen, you know. the the enjoyment is in the ride, not the ending, mm. man. That's true. That's true. But all right, is the enjoyment here in Kyle's corner? Uh, this, is, is, this is a a segment we got to kind of set up uh, a little bit here because we don't do it as often. Yeah, we don't do it ever. <laughs> we did it a couple of times. We have a graphic. Like, okay. It's a little outdated, you could tell, with some of the, the, yeah. the photos. But... He is there in all of them. <laughs> but anyways, uh, this just think of this as back in the day, 60 minutes, Andy Rooney would be there in the last five minutes to kind of have something to say. And... Between my text messages with Kyle this week, he has plenty to say about the the wild card exclusive game on Peacock. Kyle, first set this thing up and then just go at it. So I, I know this has been uh, people have kind of talked about this to death, but uh, it's just so egregious, the whole thing. So the NFL sold the rights to the Chiefs uh, Dolphins game to NBC to air exclusively on Peacock. Now, most NFL games you can just find on broadcast television nationwide. Well, for this game, it would air in the markets on broadcast. And then everyone else, they said, yeah, no, you're going to have to get Peacock. Sorry, guys. (laughs) And so this really annoyed a lot of fans. um, And they saw for what it was, which is a a major money grab by the NFL. They sold it for like 120, 180. It was a boatload of cash uh, for it. Um, Not to mention whatever ad money they get from the advertising. So now you've got a subscriber double dipping on the money on the, on the rights and the ad money. It's, it's insane. Um, It's just, it's just crazy to me. Uh, representatives from Congress were getting involved, bringing this up. Um, it's just like, like, where does the greed end with the NFL? H- how much more money could you want? And uh, I, the, the way Peacock was advertising this was that, like, if you join us, you'll be a part of, you know, the, this historic event. And then the next day they went on and said, this was the biggest streaming yeah. event ever and good for us. Like we did anything besides make them more money. It's just so, yeah. it's so hilarious. They it's, got you for that. They got you for that year. Cause like I had to subscribe to Peacock this past weekend, not for the game, but for season two of the traders. <laughs> and they did this, they did this correctly with, they, it was a good business plan. Mm-hmm. The same weekend of this game, they did Traders. They had that Ted uh, series based on the movies there, all dropping mm-hmm. this weekend to get people as, as big as they can to sign up. And then what is one month to the day of the next release? The Oppenheimer release. So in February, yeah. they're going to have Oppenheimer on the service. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, that'll get you for the next month. And like, yeah. I see what they're doing here as the businessman it is this like makes sense you know if they really want to get mm. peacock going this this makes sense and i i'm i will say i i know you said this too kyle i am just worried for the the future for for you guys because you know i mean amazon bought thir- thursday night football and right i, I believe they have uh, yeah, rights for they that. have the rights to thursday night football yeah. yeah linear tv is dying especially broadcast tv mm-hmm. we saw it with even just the emmys like it's it's going down. It's going to the streamers. It's mm-hmm. like, what's going to pick it up next? Like, Monday Night Football on Netflix, you know, whatever championship, um, you know, tournament on, you know, Apple TV Plus. Like, that's going to happen. It is interesting that it's just this one game, you know, being on Peacock, you know, versus maybe a season. Like, I think what they have, like, with, with soccer yeah. uh, and stuff. But you have to tell me, because, uh, again, this is just how... Um, you know, oblivious I am to sports. What is the NFL red zone? And how is that like different? So the NFL red zone and the NFL Sunday ticket are things that you can purchase to see all out of market games. So if I'm living in New York and I'm a 
Packers fan, which yeah. is a real thing. <laughs> um, I can't always see the Packers because I'm not in their market. So I get the Giants and Jets terrible games all day. So um, and the and so I really only see my favorite team when they're in prime time, where they're Monday night, Sunday night football, or one of the major games of the week then it gets shown pretty much nationwide. So but was but, this because so, it's like a wild card game? Because like, why wouldn't this just then be like, well, you're being able to watch it in Miami and Kansas city. That's your local market. But this one is not like, that's where I'm, I think I'm confused by like, how is this one, I guess, different from like those other games? Because so the thing about the NFL and the playoffs is, yeah. It was always oh, okay. You could see the playoff games because they're the biggest games. There's only six of them a week. Mm. Like there's very very few. There's uh, you know. So the idea is that it's a uh, the nationally everyone can watch these and it's mm. on broadcast. So the NFL is taking a step towards what I mm. think they're eventually going to do is they're going to make the Super Bowl a yeah. pay per view event. Yeah. Yeah, that's the goal. That is the that is the goal, because not only are they going to make the money uh, from you having to subscribe, then they're going to put ads in it because that's the way the game is broken up. They're going to make money off of that. And guess what? You're going to cut out the middleman of the NBC and all yeah. that because the NFL Network already has their streaming service. So yeah. why would I? Uh, distribute to other companies unless it's going to give me more market share and then I'm going to sell it to them for a, a gazillion dollars. So the, it's just all about greed mm. and th that's all it is, man. And that mm. no amount of money is ever enough uh, and they make a ton, a ton of money and somehow the players are only still getting a share of that. Mm. It's it's crazy, man. Mm. It's It's crazy. I agree with what you're saying with that Super Bowl. That's definitely where I think this is leaning, or at the very least, going to be on streaming at some point. Got to ask you, though, if, to play devil's advocate a little bit, is it a good idea, maybe short-term, I don't know about long-term, but, like, for you instance, like, okay, you can only watch your Green Bay team, you know, when it's in prime time and stuff. Mm -hmm. Would you want, you know, maybe it's like, oh, like, this week's game is on peacock okay I'll, I'll spend six dollars and watch this game or maybe if it was even a little less it's like okay you can almost buy each game instead of doing the nfl like Sunday rent ticket, a which game i think is like you know i'm sure hundreds of dollars to get the full package yeah it's like oh maybe like i want to watch the kansas city game this weekend i'll pay three bucks to watch this game or something like doing it like a la carte like that yeah do you like that or do you th um you know? if it's out of market it depends on the mm -hmm. price if we're getting up to twenty twenty five dollars yeah. to watch a game, I'm not doing that. But yeah. if it's like five, but bucks, if it's like maybe, if if it's like maybe. the Peacock thing, it was like oh, it's like it's yeah. six bucks for a month of Peacock, like yeah. But yeah, yeah, it, it, it's. Uh, but I mean, it would have to be a really good game because yeah. I can just wait a day and watch the highlights, and uh, you know, thirty seconds yeah. after the game, I'm gonna have a bunch of highlights, anyways. Mm -hmm. um, just go on, go on Twitter, and you can see the clips, you can see the yeah. play by play, you can. Yeah, I bet you yeah. could probably pick up the the radio station online too and listen yeah. to the game instead of watching it. And you yeah, know, and you still have... look at us going old school. <laughs> <laughs> Back but in my day, it was on the, the TV. The, now it's on the radio. Like... The other thing about this though is, it would be okay if the product was better. If yeah. Peacock was better, okay, <laughs> because I have Peacock. In Je I didn't watch this game, even though I did have Peacock already. So I you Peacock weren't part of that special group, Kyle? No, I was not no. part of the special. You missed out. Yes. So I have the Premier League. I watch it for soccer. But with the soccer, they will not allow you to pause, mm. fast forward, rewind. That sucks. Uh, for a live thing, they don't let you do anything. They don't let you record it. It's like... We've gone back in time. TiVo was probably the best <laughs> option for these things, and it's gone, man. It's just like the interface for these things is worse. We're paying more money for it, and it's getting worse. Mm. The 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 stuff that's even being created. We're not talking about live sports, but creativity wise, is getting worse. It's like what what are we doing here? What you weren't we a doing? fan of uh, Patrick narrating live whatever game he did. 
Patrick he's, Neary. They're they're doing Star? that for the um uh Super Bowl, you know. They're oh, the Nickelodeon, the game. Nickelodeon, yeah. 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 No, it's not I mean, creative enough for you, Kyle. <laughs> well, to be fair, I mean, I think it's a great idea. But what is the NFL trying to do? They're trying to get the young kids right from yep. the get go. So it's yeah. it's almost like tobacco and and you know cigarette companies. <laughs> the the yeah, NFL well, yeah. is just the CTE of that, the brain injuries of that. You know what I mean? They're trying to get you young, man. Oh boy. Well, anything else, Kyle? We should we close out the corner? Is that it? No, but also Peacock stinks, and this isn't going to save them. Maybe Trader Season Two will. Uh, I'm into trader yeah. traders. <laughs> uh, that might be my quick check next week. We'll see. But um, all right, that's all we got for this week. We had a lot to talk about, a lot of different things to catch up on. We have one more for January. Now that the Emmys are over, we can relax for a week before we shift into the Oscars. Oscar nominations next week on the podcast. No, no rest for us here. And then February is another busy month. We have the series premiere of Mr. and Miss Smith. Uh, from Donald Glover and Maya Erskine, and then the final season premiere of Curb Your Enthusiasm. I can't believe so, it's still going. Yeah, well, this is it. This is the end. Yeah. Um, but supposedly, we'll see. Uh, and then maybe the Super Bowl. Maybe we'll talk about the Super Bowl and the commercials and all that stuff too. So a lot to do in the next few weeks. Make sure you're following us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, the blog, doerdynasty.com. Uh, we're live on Twitch and on YouTube. Uh, Twitch is at twitch.tv slash Dynasty and YouTube. Uh, I don't have that link in front of me. The, the exact. Uh, do, you, do you know it, John? Uh, I think it's bit.ly slash dual redundancy live, all capitals, I believe. All right. So, yeah, we're on, we're on both now at the same exact time. Um, in January, we've been doing Wednesdays at 8 p.m., uh, make sure you're following us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok to make sure you know exactly what we're talking about and when we're talking about it at Tour Dunsey. I got to thank both you guys for joining me tonight. John directing the show, as always, getting you know all the graphics and all the little segment headers and the, the audio editing, getting up on Apple Podcasts. I couldn't do it without you guys. And all right, that's all we got. Until next time, I'm David Allen. I'm Jumper. And I'm Kyle Bridger. And that's all we got for Tour Dunsey. Goodbye, everybody.